Hey guys, Jeff from Home Renovision, and today we're in the basement dealing with this. This is our lateral sewer line. We're out in the country, so we got a septic tank. Boom, it goes right through the wall here. That's the clean out. Challenge you're gonna find in almost every basement is you're gonna have plumbing like this or heat runs jumping a joist. You're gonna have areas where they've designed intentionally for you to have to make some sort of a box. We're gonna show you my system today for how to make the perfect straight bulk head, soffit, whatever you call it. We're gonna drop it. We're gonna move it over a little bit, make it two feet intentional and make it an architectural feature. So I'm gonna show you all my tips and tricks to get this done so it looks perfect perfect when you're finished. The biggest challenge with making boxes that are really long is they have too much movement or they have too much corner bead joints that don't line up or you end up building below everything and everything gets really low. Today we're going to go tight to the steel. We're going to be able to put pot lights in here. It's going to make it look surgical. It's going to look like we built this with a 3D printer. Let's just jump into this. And I know it's crazy, but today I'm not even using a laser. <laughs> it's not necessary. What we are going to do, because we're dealing with steel and engineered floor joists, everything is already perfectly flat. We're just going to measure off with our tape. And we're going to measure off from the steel, not the wooden plate above the steel, because that'll come and go. And we're going to go to 24. I'm going to make my mark right here. Uh. And that's how you make a mark, make a V. Because the tip right here, that's the measurement. This is just to make that extra influence, all right? We're gonna come down here and do it again. And then I'm gonna just throw in a chalk line. And the chalk line is the secret to success here. Okay, we'll throw a chalk line up and then we'll install our soffit. We're gonna throw a screw right on the point. Ooh, lovely. I'm gonna show you my chalk line. That's the string that's the center. The key here is to put this over top of the screw head so it's resting right there on the middle. And that's part of the line. There we go. Go as far as you can. And then when you're done, you hold it with your fingers, okay? Create tension. Now we got tension. Now I wanna move the string around until this is right on that other tip. And then we pull and snap. Now I got a line. That is how you use a chalk line. It's a lot better than your cars looking going, hey, Alex, good from here, right? Okay, now let's get our steel. The biggest secret of here is we're gonna use steel track. Wood is never straight. <laughs> like, never straight. So, we're gonna install steel track onto the ceiling, and that's as easy as using a drill and a couple of drywall screws. Hello. Alrighty. Now, uh, I wanna get right on my red line. There we go, and the reason I do that is that one little dent is all it takes so that my screw isn't running around when I'm trying to put it through. There, let's get on our line again. There we are. Okay, when you're building a box like this, we're not building structure. We don't have to carry a lot of weight. We only have to carry drywall. So one screw for every joist is plenty. We'll go all the way to the other end. And that'll make sure that the rest of this stays straight while I throw the screws in. Piece of cake. There we are. Hey. Okay, there we go. Step one. That wasn't that hard. Step two is determine the height that we want to build to. So to do that, we're going to take our tape measure and we're going to go right up to the joist, but we're going to go behind the pipe and measure from here. You can see that that number makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> 13 sixteenths. That's just great. We'll see how consistent that is. Wow. Yeah, that's consistent. Nine and 13 sixteenths. Okay, so I'm gonna get another piece of the same track. I'm gonna take out my snips and I'm gonna cut a bunch. I'll just go nine and three quarters. That's fine, it's a little shorter. The reason for that is this. If I make this section here just a little shorter and I can make some adjustments and then put them together. It gives me a little flexibility because even steel isn't perfectly straight. When I sit here and I look down that whole 30 foot beam, I can see a little bit of movement. You'd think it's straight, but it isn't. Okay, I'm gonna work right here, Max. All right, so here we are, stud. 9 and 13 sixteenths, right? If you pay attention here, check out the depth of this. It's an inch and an eighth thick, which means at the bottom and the top, I've got over two inches of play. So I don't want to be trying to cut metal perfect on all three sides with hand snips. I'm going to cut it back at nine and a half, okay? I'm going to just mark the outside, the inside, and the other side. And we'll try to make this as straight as we can. Measure this side, right? I'm gonna look and measure here, cut, bend it, and then you cut it. That's about as close as you're gonna to get to perfect, all right? Boom, one down. Repeat, nine and a half, only 57 more to go. <laughs> right? There we go. All right, 
Now this is the tool that's uh, the secret weapon. It's a crimper for steel studs. And you can see it just pushes the two metal together. And I'll just show you an action here. We set it in and I stick it over. It's like a nail punch. Done. It's like if this is it and you're putting one, th a, a, like a claw through, it takes the metal and it tears it and it peels it in. And when the tool is gone, it's, it's still crimped up. There's an overlay. That's all that's going on. Because we're more concerned about the height than everything else. Oh, always put the tooth on the outside so you're crimping into the metal. All right. There we go. Done. There, stud attached. <laughs> this $20 tool replaces the need to hire someone to help you for the day. Okay, we'll do this over here. Now, here's the foundation for this. This is where it gets fun. Now, I got another track. Now, remember, the, what I'm building here is a U-shape. goes all the way around the whole room. But I don't have to worry about where I'm intersecting because I can always cut it back later. This is to get started. All right. There we go. And then we take this. Now I'm in a position where I can take my level, and level it off, and then crimp it together. Okay. Boom. All right. If it's not level, all we do is give it a little tap. Because this holds it, but it'll let it slide. And then when it's bang on the money, I'll take the crimper and I'll get it from this side. <laughs> all right. All right. Now that's not the final solution. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a few more studs in there, we'll actually screw it all together, and that'll give it the longevity to carry all the weight. This is a great way to line up all your studs and get everything level. Now the secret to using a screw to drive this together is I just put a little mark here. So that's where the edge of the stud is, okay? You wanna go right off the edge into the back, not the front, because the front will bend away from the tip before the screw can make a hole. If you go into that back part, that's where the meat of that stud is. There's nowhere for it to deflect. And it just drives right in, smooth as butter. Again, over here, the back side is on this side. Oh, there we are. All right, now we're set up. This is not a very big rise. And I understand that people's desire would be, well, if I'm gonna put a butt joint, for instance, on the drywall here, I want a piece of material there to put a screw on each side. No, for the love of God, no. Just use your head for a second and say to yourself, when you install drywall on a wall horizontally, you only have material and screws every 16 inches. So anytime you build a ladder less than 16 inches tall, there's no requirement to have anything on the joint. Just tape it, all right? You can pop these in. Remember, the only weight that you're carrying is the weight of the drywall. And as soon as you screw the drywall across the top of this, it carries itself. So we have nothing really to do here. This is already overkill. All we're gonna do here now is take the screws and the drill and pop a couple more in. Okay. The reason I'm using screws and not just a crimper is because I'm trying to go for perfection. And the crimper is great for giving you an extra pair of hands, but when it comes right down to it, anytime you make a mistake with a crimper, you can't go back and fix it because you put a hole through all the metal. Lining this up, that just makes it all that much stronger. All right, now let's get down to the other end here and we'll talk about how to join all this together. Now, because I wanted 24 inch off the backside, remember we're doing a cabinet and a TV wall here. We want to go about 16 inches and I am 16 and a half, not a problem. Remember we did the video and I told you why it's important to do your strapping and here's why. Okay, because now I've got somewhere to attach my wall. I can't put a ladder in between floor joists unless I have strapping. It's not like I have to now, oh, I, now I have to figure out how to solve this problem. I've already created a new ceiling height by adding the strapping. This makes this incredibly fast. And I'm just gonna put another mark down here at 16 and a half. Okay, throw up my first track, and we're gonna do the same thing all over again. I'm gonna hang my track, I'm gonna build a ladder, and then this track down the bottom, I'm gonna have extend past the inside corner. That gives me an ability to take 
two pieces like this and like this and then screw the back side and the bottom and top corners that makes that all one bend so there's no movement and it'll avoid cracking okay guys we're gonna tie our corner together here let's just first refresh our memory our measurement out to here 23 and a quarter from there we're going 24 inches right so we want to just bring that corner together all right, there we go. Now I've got my intersection point. Remember, just because it's straight doesn't mean everything stays level and square. So always measure and mark. Now what we're going to do here is I'm going to cut down the side where my intersection point is. All right, and a good piece of meat here. And I'm going to flatten this out. Okay. Now I'm going to insert it. And then I'm going to screw it. And that'll bond those two pieces together in the corner. Okay, remember... Keep your fingers out of the way. We'll use two screws in this corner just to be sure. Now, to finish that off, right, we can screw that corner. Now what I'm gonna do is, to make this corner complete, I'm gonna tie this to top and bottom, tie this one to the bottom, and then tie these two together. Make sense? When that's bonded together now, my drywall is continuous. That is never gonna crack in that corner. Now, we're gonna just finish off the rest of this room, but first, let's jump to the other side of the beam and show you what we're gonna do over there to be able to complete this construction. So I'm just cutting the angle on it, coming up in here, up in here, up in here. I'm about to blow your mind. I'm gonna be pulling it off the wall just a little bit here, and I'll show you why. The wood on the sill is in further than the middle. So I'm just making sure that I'm gonna clear that. I'm gonna build another ladder right here. Now here's why. I have 24 inches to the far side of that steel to this edge of this steel. That's a pretty good span. But in truth, it's only 21 and a half inches. So when I'm installing my drywall, as long as I get the drywall on the inside of this piece and I put on a little bit of adhesive here and then I can screw it on here, I'm only spanning 25 inches. I have a rule when it comes to soffit boxes, anything more than 30 inches, you've got to add another support. And that can be tricky because it's hard to get all three pieces exactly level. But at least with this kind of a system, if you have an issue, I can drop this one on, I can throw my level across, I can set it right where I want it, throw in a clip or two and then add some screws. It all comes together right a little bit quick. Now, because we're on a 45, I'm going to do that as well, give or take. One here. One here. Okay, kind of the crimper. We'll keep that nice and tall. Go right to the back end here. Oh, come on, you bugger. There we go. That makes it possible to set the screw. Okay. All right, here we go. Now we're gonna just come down to flush. Throw that clip on, hit the other side, do the same. Couple of screws and there we go. This is the easiest way to work, guys. Metal's a little different, but at the end of the day, couple of the right tools for the job and it's just hand tools. Buy the right fastener. Something that does some self-driveling. These are actually called, yeah, I call them wafer screws, but uh, this place calls them pan framing screw. Hmm. The idea is if you go to the store and you want to get them to say, hey, I'm screwing steel track to steel stud and they'll give you the right product. Maybe we'll even put a link in the video description for a link on Amazon uh, to save you the hassle. You know what, that one is gonna get a crimp. I can't get a screw back there. Let's get it flush. Perfect. Rinse and repeat. I mean, we have to do this about, what, 100 more times? <laughs> There's the rest of my day. Max is gonna go home. In just a couple seconds, we'll catch up on the next day. We're doing the drywall work. Cheers. <laughs> Bonk head video? Uh, all right, so I'm gonna show you a little system here for bulkheads. You're gonna love it. We're just gonna take some PL Premium. <laughs> this gun has not been used in a couple days. Put a bead on the bottom of your two by two, two by three, two by four, two by eight, I don't care. No dust, squeeze it right onto the steel. Flush with the steel. There we go. Boom, that's called structure. You don't have to nail. Now the next day you come back because you want to know how am I going to put my drywall ceiling here and attach it to the steel? And the answer is I'm not. I'm going to attach it to the wood. So I'm going to put in my wood flush with the steel I'm screwing it to the block that's setting the adhesive. Uh, 
Now I got a screw surface and I got structure. Perfect every time. My drywall needs to be 28 inches wide by however long deep I want to make it. But because I'm coming over here and then I'm changing direction on the ceiling, I'm going to have my drywall come to here. This will make my next measurement easy because I'll be able to measure from the outside to this point over four feet and then draw a line there and measure back. This is really of no consequence. It's not that big a deal. But if I stop anywhere else, the angle gets weird and I've got to add that angle on this piece of drywall and that's silly. So we'll measure it here. And it's going to be, well, we're going to go 39 and three quarters. Whenever you have more than one number, start writing them down. Right where you work makes a lot of sense. What did I say, 28? Yep. All right, so by 28. Now, I'm also going to put the drywall up and slide it over past the pipe, just like this wall piece was done, right? So I'm going to go 11 and a half and 18 and a half. Now I got my numbers. I'm going to bring my drywall over here so I can see the numbers while I measure and cut. Just double check before we go. Here we go. 11 and a half, 18 and a half. I'm a little aggressive. That's fine. That's my height. I could convert it that way. Sometimes you just got to think through twice, right? All right. Let's cut this. As a rule when you're doing drywall you want to try to get your taper joints to meet your taper joints and all that kind of jazz right but if you're doing a u-shaped box it's impossible unless you want the whole side of your box to be all butt joints that'll drive you nuts too so what i like to do is find somewhere inconspicuous like in a corner where there's gonna be lots of mud and i can make a transition from a taper joint which is right here to the butt joint okay there we go one like a glove box there we are do I even know where the wood is? I think I got wood here. I know I got wood here. I just put it there. Okay. All right. We got the metal. All right. You'll notice that whenever you're putting a drywall screw into metal, it always wants to separate. Okay. That's normal. Don't let it bother you. There we go. So here's my ugly joint. This is a full half inch and then tapered. So. I'm gonna mark it, and when I'm doing all my taping, I'm gonna remember to do a fill coat here first, and then I'll do the rest of the room, and then I'll come back and I'll hit that with the paper tape later. Not a big deal. It's just a little bit of a fill. The only thing left for me to do now is I wanna stick a piece on the soffit face real quick because I wanted to go show you my secret for taping these boxes. You don't use metal corner bead. You don't use paper with metal. This is a 30 foot run. I don't wanna have any of those joints. Whenever you put two pieces of corner bead together, they're never lined up right because it's subject to change with all the different contours of the drywall, all the little details, okay? So you don't wanna have that problem. You're gonna follow my system. You're gonna have the sexiest bulkheads in town. And then that, what everybody wants, let's get two more little pieces installed and we'll get on to taping that bulkhead. So now we got our two by three in place. It's time to take a look at the width of our bulkhead, 22 and a half, and that's perfect. So let me go cut some drywall up. Just a quick thing. Mark whenever you have an end, okay, of your framing, so you don't run into problems as you're going along. When you're doing this kind of work, realize it's easier to screw into the wood than the metal. Start with all the screws related to where the wood locations are. There we are. That looks amazing. As a rule, anything that's less than four feet by four feet can be held up with two screws. Okay, so don't overdo the pain. Once you got it up, it's supporting its own weight. You don't have to be awkwardly trying to hold it in place anymore. Try to pinch your drywall together with metal because see it always wants to separate. And then it'll pinch again. And that's fine until you have a screw in. Then you want to push. Okay, so that it doesn't separate. Or you'll lift that off the screw. Now, I'm gonna stick one little piece of drywall on here, and I'm gonna show you how I do my corner bead. All right, well, here we go. Now I've got the back done. I just close up this corner so I can show you how I tape my soffits. That is a lot of fun, eh? There we are. And one more. Okay. Of course, get nice and comfortable here. If your ladder has got good rubber feet, then this is easy. All 
All right, there we go. That's a nice box. All right, guys, I taped the bulkhead, all the joints. We're gonna do the outside corner now. Now, this is a straight flex. There's a couple of different companies out there that offer the same kind of product. But here, let me just go through the basics. It is a wider roll than the traditional paper, but just a little bit, right? But what it does have that traditional paper doesn't have is a couple of things. It's really thick. And when you fold it in half, it gives you an outside corner, all right? And you can just relax it a little bit as you're setting it in. And the sides of the edge are perforated, so the mud can go through and bond Okay, it's kind of like a metal corner bead, how it has all the holes. Same kind of concept. What this does, it comes in a huge roll. So I can cut a piece of this for the whole length of the room. Huh? No joints. Perfect. So that's what we're going to do. And all I'm going to do is just roll it out on the wall. And I dragged it with me. There we go. It's really strong. You can't tear this with your hands. You need snips. Now, as far as application goes, make sure you pre crease it. You're going to go through crazy amount of work trying to do that on the ladder or on your bench while you're using the mud tools. You only have so many hands, right? Get this all creased up. Stretch it on out. All right, get this in your pocket. I like to even throw it through my belt loop so I don't lose it. Okay, there we go. Up on the bench we go. Ha, ha. Yeah, have I showed you this yet? This is my new uh, Hawk paint. It screws on with the regular handle so I can switch tools as I work. Okay, consider getting one. It wasn't that expensive. And wow, what a game changer being up here while you're taping. You're doing a little four inch or something and then you can pull this out and do a whole travel edge. All right, love this tool. There we go. Nice and generous here, off the side of the knife. The only thing you gotta watch out for is you don't walk off the end of your ladder. Again, nice and liberal to the underside. The thing is, you can only work with this stuff on the size of bench that you got. So if you're going to work with a ladder, you're in a lot of trouble because this tape is pretty heavy. And catch. But if you got a bench like what I'm using, your bench is four feet wide. You can reach over a foot or so on each end and you can start off with a six foot piece. And that is a lot, a lot more handy. Because the more of this tape that you can get on to start with, the less it's going to be wanting to pull away. Here we go. Now we're going to take our paper corner. We're simply going to set it in. And, uh, right? I told you this stuff is really rigid, so it's going to fight with you a little bit. Okay, here we go. Now, the secret here is you want to pinch the corner. You want this to extend a little lower and a little further out. So just pinch the corner, okay? Make sure that you're going to be able to fill it all later because you're manufacturing this on site. You've got to be wise to how that works. And I want to just clean that so that the pressure, that you see the mud popping through the bead, okay? That is awesome. And then the same on the top. Let's just continue on here. The less opportunity I give this to fall apart and peel off the ceiling, the better. We're close to the end. Now it's time to get picky about the measurement, okay? We want to make this right on the money. Here we go. Now, just because I'm working quick doesn't mean that I don't have to be somewhat of a perfectionist. In this situation, you're better to put on more than you need. Be careful not to like leave areas like this, okay? Fill them up. Make sure that there's plenty of mud on the inside of that corner. That's where the strength is found, right? There we go. Let's get this set in position. 
I'm gonna pull it this way. There we go. Give it that little pinch so I have an extru extended corner. There we are. Okay. One last time. Beautiful. We're at a point where you have two options. You can let that dry or you can come back. Because remember, whenever you're dealing with paper, you want it wet so it doesn't bubble and blister, right? You could always throw a bit of a fill coat on just to make sure that everything is nice and wet. All right. And that will make the second application even better. And I'm not putting on too much mud. I'm just adding a little bit, making sure everything's wet. A little quick pass, okay? Nice pressure. There we go. That is how you make a 20, 30, 50, or 100 foot bulkhead perfect every time. Cheers, thanks for joining us. Don't forget, hit the like button if this was helpful. We will see you in the next video of this series. I can't wait to show you what we've got in store for this huge video wall here.